Hi, everybody. Um, I'm, thanks for inviting me today to talk about maternal arrhythmias during pregnancy. So what is, what is the incidence of arrhythmias during pregnancy? Well, palpitations and arrhythmias are actually quite common. Um, during pregnancy, mom's heart rates increase by about 25% overall. So sinus tachycardia is extremely common, especially by the third trimester. Uh, there's also frequent non-sustained arrhythmias in ectopy, um, which is pre present in about 50% of moms if they're screened by Holter monitors. So that's quite common and it's, it's similar to similar age, healthy population um, women. However, sustained arrhythmias, thankfully, are a lot less common, and these occur only in about two to three um, moms out of a thousand. So what are the causes of these um, sustained arrhythmias? They're usually a recurrence or a continuation of previously diagnosed arrhythmias, either SVT, VT, or even bradycardias. Um, and that would include those who have inherited arrhythmia syndromes. Sometimes the arrhythmias are the first presentation of arrhythmia in a woman with known structural or congenital heart disease. Um, but in most cases, um, moms have arrhythmias where they had no prior cardiac history. And luckily, many of the arrhythmias that we see in pregnancy are being benign that are pregnancy induced. So when you see an arrhythmia um, in a pregnant mom, uh, I would suggest that you reach out fairly soon to your care team experts, cardiology and EP uh, for, for advice. As we all know, medical science and practice is rapidly evolving toward further subspecialization by practitioners in all fields, um, including cardiology and EP. And because of the rapid evolution in diagnostic and treatment modalities for cardiac arrhythmias, um, it is recommended that early referral to cardiac EP is appropriate for most cases of arrhythmia during pregnancy. Um, to these lines, we have not to date had any specific guidelines for treatment of arrhythmias in pregnancy, but we're actually finishing up these right now um, they're being sponsored primarily by the Heart Rhythm Society in conjunction with the ACC and the American Heart Association as well. Um, that should be a useful document um, to help guide us on how to manage common arrhythmias um, uh, during pregnancy. So the care team is obviously going to be uh, OB, um, cardiology. Um, and DP for arrhythmias, as, as well as a fetal cardiologist, because some of these arrhythmias um, can affect the baby. And also, if they're inherited arrhythmias, the baby is at risk, as you've heard about somewhat from um, my colleagues today. So it takes a village to care for uh, moms with arrhythmias in pregnancy. How do we diagnose arrhythmias? Uh, in, in, with methods that are similar to patients in the non-pregnant state. So we, we now use a lot of uh, ECG recordings, um, both for baseline recordings and also during symptoms. These can be 12 lead ECGs that we all know about. Um, more and more commonly, we're using ambulatory recording, such as traditional Holter monitors. Um, as well as newer disposable ambulatory ECG monitors uh, that you see commonly at the clinic. We use the Zeo patch, um, but there are many companies now that make disposable ambulatory ECG monitors. Uh, more and more, we're seeing patients come in with recordings from their iWatch or their Fitbits. And also, there are a myriad now of smartphone applications and add-ons for smartphones where you can record certainly heart rates and as well as um, some of the apps will record an ECG using a wristband or another device. Um, for syncope or suspected life-threatening arrhythmias for a diagnosis, we are also turning to implantable loop recorders and these can also safely be used in pregnancy. 
Uh, we can do EP studies in pregnancy. Um, although we don't usually need these for diagnosis, diagnosis now that um, we have excellent ECG recordings. But um, we can do an EP study if we need to um, during pregnancy, especially if we want to treat an arrhythmia. And if we do this, we try to avoid um, risk from anesthesia, so use a lot of local anesthesia rather than general. And we can do these studies now often without using any radiation um, and just using ultrasound for guidance, thus avoiding any risk to the baby for radiation exposure. Um, treatment for arrhythmias in pregnancy is in general the same as it is for non-pregnant patients. Um, we will use medications, ideally at the safest, um, lowest effective dose in the safest risk profile in pregnancy. There are some medications with known um, risk to the fetus. For example, beta blockers are commonly used for many types of arrhythmias, but unfortunately these have been linked to poor fetal growth, especially in the third trimester. Um, but that said, they may be the safest medication to use for many arrhythmias. Um, if there's no other choice that's a good choice, we will use these medications at the lowest effective dose. Um, if we can stop medications, um, we will do this if possible. And um, as I said, um, if we need to use risky medications, we will if these are considered um, for, you know, life saving for the mom. Uh, you have to discuss, of course, the risk benefits and alternatives with the parents and mitigate the risk of the fetus, if at all possible, um, with any medication we use in pregnancy for arrhythmias. Um, procedures. What about procedures during pregnancy? Some procedures may be delayed if there are safe medical alternatives. Um, if you have to do a cardioversion, it's usually safe for the fetus but we don't really have any data on the risk. Um, we know that there's no medical procedure that's zero risk, right? So um, uh, we do do DC cardioversions during pregnancy with the caveat that when you place the um, patches of the paddles on the mom that you try to avoid uh, breast tissue um, when you place the, the paddles. Um, we, as I mentioned before, we can do ablations in pregnancy. If we can wait till postpartum, great. But if we need to do them, we do them ideally without uh, x-ray. And there are case reports saying this is also safe for the fetus. Um, but again, no case series and no, no good studies of ablation in, in pregnancy. And we know the risk isn't zero. So we avoid ablation if we can, but if we need to do it, it is um, usually safe. What other treatments do we have? Well, pacemakers and defibrillators um, can also be placed in pregnancy. Um, we try to minimize risk of radiation. And again, risk is not um, zero, but it's usually safe for the fetus. If we're doing defibrillators in pregnancy, we would recommend that we avoid doing defibrillation threshold testing. Um, to help minimize risk to the fetus. And as uh, Jeff mentioned, there are alternatives for implantable cardioverter defibrillators in pregnancy, such as the wearable defibrillator. Um, and these are often recommended first line uh, if, if um, they're considered to be effective and if the mom's okay with this. Sometimes uh, patients will not be compliant with wearable defibrillators and therefore we need to go to an ICD. Um, ideally, if there's an anticipatable need for a device in pregnancy, such as a pacemaker or defibrillator, um, ideally these would be done before pregnancy. So we would recommend that any moms with known arrhythmias uh, that they be seen for pre-pregnancy counseling with their cardiac EP um, before uh, they actually get pregnant. Um, and this is important for patients with arrhythmias in addition to those with congenital heart disease or other types of structural heart disease. 
What about cardiac arrest in pregnancy? It's rare, but it's um, at delivery, it's estimated to be about one in 30,000 deliveries. Um, there is, there are differences recommended in resuscitation techniques for a pregnant woman um, related to the gravid uterus and fetal blood flow. And actually there's a nice document that was recently published um, in circulation in 2015, um, updating specifically about cardiac arrest in pregnancy, the do's and don'ts. Um, one of the main recommendations there is to involve, you know, if, if a, a pregnant mom comes in in cardiac arrest for the team to call OB right away, as well as uh, the fetal or pediatric cardiologist in neonatology um, for advice. And then you can see in this picture here, one of the recommendations um, is when you're doing CPR is to um, place pressure on the gravid uterus uh, towards the patient's left side. But these, this is a great document. And for those of you who may be doing um, cardiac resuscitation during pregnancy, I'd recommend um, reading this. So key takeaways um, about arrhythmias in pregnancy. Um, thankfully, most of them are benign. They may be pre-existing or a new diagnosis. And if they're pre-existing, it's really recommended that you do some pre-pregnancy planning to avoid the need for treatment during pregnancy. Um, refer to cardiac EP early and often. Um, again, most are benign, but um, a minority of arrhythmias will require treatment um, if they're serious. And often, um, you know, if you're careful, treatment of the mother uh, will lead to a safe and successful outcome for both the mother and baby in most cases. And then um, look for the new document uh, guidelines about arrhythmias and pregnancy that should be coming soon and hopefully will be published in early 2021. So thanks.